Hey gang, Diana here today with an art journal page. I have a selection of warm colors here, plus a little green, uh, reds and yellows. I have some great stencils from Stencil Girl, and I'm going to sort of be featuring these today. I have some water buckets. I have a nice soft floppy brush a stiff stenciling brush, a unipasco, or any kind of a paint pen, it doesn't matter. Gel medium, um, a page of quotes that I've prepped and will be available for free download. These are all about women. I have a palette and I have my great big uh, favorite Stillman and Burn, terrible glare, sorry, Stillman and Burn um, journal. So let's get started. I've flipped my book around to a uh, landscape orientation. Let me find a clean page here. And um, I'll work here on this page. So uh, what you want to do is I have some paints out. And these are all the yellows, except for that red. Because <laughs> that's red, huh? <laughs> that's for later. Um, just puddle some of your gel or matte medium in here and um, grab your stencil brush. And I also have, I have a rag here, um, and I have a piece of uh, just bond paper, just cheap paper. Could be a mag piece of magazine, whatever. Uh, just put that on because we're, this, this will create the line between land and sky. And what we're going to do is flip this stencil around so it's not, um, it's a little less sort of, I guess the word is, is static. It's not a head-on straight. It's going to be rotating and creating a nice little um, sort of pattern throughout. So just dipping into that, I'm using the gel medium because it's going to give a slicker, uh, even slicker, I should say, even slicker uh, feel to the page, which will create another surface and we'll be painting on top of that. So just flipping this around, changing up the colors. I've mixed some of these colors together. That's that. I think that's the nickel azo, which goes, if you don't have that color, you should have that. Um, just switching up and flipping this around. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this whole area. And as you're doing this, avoid any of these hard edges and just keep to the middle of the stencil. So that's it. Uh, you can remove that now and you can see that I've got a nice soft line. It's kind of right in the middle of my page. Um, leaving plenty of space for this stencil, for the next stencil we're going to use. So you can see that'll fit nicely there. So take that into consideration if you're using exactly these stencils take that into consideration. Okay, so now we've re I've removed the paper and we're just going to sort of take this. I mean, you could center it, but let's, this, especially since this is sort of centered, let's give a little more pop to the composition and uh, put it down here. I'm tempted, in fact, I'm going to add a bit of tape to this stencil to keep it from shifting too much on me. Um, just put a little tape there, uh, maybe over here. And once again, you really want to avoid those hard edges. We're not going to be moving this one around. I'm just going to go straight into it with, I have some uh, Quin Red, Golden's Quin Red, and some of that matte medium. And I'm just going to make sure. You, you really kind of want to pounce that off. Okay, that was like going to the gym. Nice workout. So let's take a look at that. 
let's pull that off. I knew I had um, some messy areas here because of the, um, I was just wasn't being careful enough, I guess. Yep. Really. I also want to show you, let me see if I can find that messy up page I did. Of course, I won't be able to find it. No, nope, I found it. Here you go. I was practicing earlier and I kind of, um, but I did want to show you something here. Uh, instead of, sometimes instead of um, flipping your stencil over and trying to get stuff off flat, and it's real nice to clean off your stencil with a baby wipe this way. Uh, either way, I just find that the results are better this way. And plus, of course, my stencil gets cleaned. So if you want to use up that paint, go for it. Okay, so uh, check this out. I'm actually loving this accident page more than the other one. And I think it's because of the composition. This is much more interesting compositionally. And, uh, but let's see what we can do here, shall we? So I had initially said to use, uh, in my supply list, to use purple. But we're not going to do that because... Um, purple will interact in a in a muddy way with the yellow. So I've actually got some cerulean blue, one of my favorite blues, um, and I've also got some glazing liquid here. I think I hope. Let's see. Get the, come on, come on out. This is what you get for not cleaning off your bottles tops. Okay. There we go. Um, and I've got a nice big soft brush. Okay, no, you can use water. I don't really like to use water with acrylics though because, um, well, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to use this. I love this glazing medium and I use it all the time. And you can see how light that is and how nicely it's going on. I guess I can get rid of that tape. Um, actually, this brush might be a little too loose. I'm going to go change. I think I'm going to change my brush out. I'll be right back. Sometimes a brush just is not the right brush. And um, that's a Simply Simmons watercolor brush, which is great but it just wasn't it didn't have enough stiffness to stand up for this to this sort of scrubbing motion you want to do with the um now let's see what's going to happen here you know we're all along for the same ride here folks <laughs> i don't know what's going to happen either <laughs> so let's just see shall we um i should get green and i am getting some very really nice greens down here. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to get that moving a little better. And, um, you know, I would not use your best brush for this. Oh, this is nice. I, I really love the way that the gel medium um, resists the paint. So it's almost like this mosaic-y thing going on. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit more of, now I close the lid. Uh, yeah, just going to add a little bit more. And I'm going to keep doing this to get this sort of, uh, in this case I want a darker color. Usually in um, landscape you want a lighter color here. But in this case, I want a darker color here. I want to draw attention to this area. So I'm going to continue doing this. Okay, so um, just, a, just a quick word. Remember, I am using the Stillman & Burn. It's the Beta 180-pound cold press. If you've got some thinner paper, that's fine. Just uh, gesso it and you'll be able to get uh, these effects. Now I'm just mixing up some really kind of gaudy orange here. 
and I'm going to stick it right here and I'll probably I could actually see the problem with using orange right now is I have all that blue in the background so we know what's going to happen right um, it's going to make make mud or it's going to make uh, uh, what's the word? Oh, come on. I can't talk in paint. Um, it's going to make, uh, grays and browns. Neutrals. Neutrals there. Good grief. Okay, so just try to get that round. If you keep your brush on the paper and spin it, a flat brush, you should get a nice round. And I'm just going to put a little dab of yellow right there. Okay, so this is essentially done. Um, I think I think these um, the doodly bits here would be fabulous. You could you could come in here with the, uh, a marker, um, any kind of paint marker would do the trick, and um, sort of trace around things and give it a little more life. It would really be fun to do that, and you sure can. Uh, any color marker. I think I really like that, especially with this. Anyway, um, the last thing I would do here is using either tape or, oh my heavens, my desk is a mess. Um, just uh, trim off one of these quotes or come up with a quote of your own and add it in here and you are good to go. Remember, thumbs up does not have to have a yellow bit of paint on it. Just a regular old thumbs up. Subscribe. See you guys.